And welcome back, all my space peoples. It is time to do another episode of Let's Play Star Trek Online. And we did Hunting the Hunters in the last episode. And now it is time for Project Nightingale. Back to another Romulan mission. Project Nightingale states, The USS Noble is missing. Track the source of an emergency signal and search for survivors. Oh, crap on a monkey stick. Look at this. This is the problem that I was afraid we were going to run into. And look at this. We ran into it. Okay, hunting the hunters w required a minimum rank of Commander 25 to play, which we did because we were Commander 25. But Project Nightingale requires a minimum rank of Commander 26, which we are not. We are Commander 25 still, and we are right here. We have this much to go before we get to Commander 26, but I can't play this mission yet. It won't let me. So, that means I'm going to have to do stuff, or do something, to get enough skill points to get to Commander 26 to be able to play Project Nightingale. And what's worse I see here is by any means is, co is Commander 27. And so, I, know, I, I have a feeling Project Nightingale is not going to give us a full rank. <clears throat> so we're going to end up having to do stuff after Project Nightingale also to get to by any means. And possibly Ground Zero, possibly every mission that we're doing now. So it is now really important that we do do extra stuff in order to get enough skill points to play the next mission. We hadn't run into it before now, but now we've run into this situation and this is exactly what I feared. The way this worked previously, before they changed this over to the way it is now, is this didn't happen because you didn't have to have basically a minimum rank or whatever. You could play, you could play these out of order for one thing, so it didn't even matter. Um, it's kind of ridiculous now because uh, now you have to, we have to get we have to get some skill points. We gotta get out there. We gotta find some stuff to do. One of the obvious things you can do, and well, I guess what I should have been doing all this time, are diplomatic missions. And um, so I'll add some now. And I should have been doing this before. And I haven't. But uh, in fact, not just diplomatic mission, but any. Doff mission, really, because um, that will give you skill points anyway. So, um, uh, really, uh, any any of these Doff missions here we can add. So we'll just go ahead and add as many as we can for right now. Even if some of them are going to fail, that's okay. Um, I'll take my chances. The problem with uh, a lot of these, however, is they're going to take time to complete. They take hours or days to complete. But that will give us some skill points. Help us out. So we'll, I need to keep an eye on that. And so will you guys. We'll have to... Uh, every sector we go to, every every uh, sector block we go to, um, need to make sure to look for um, DOF missions. Basically, I'm just randomly adding DOF missions at the moment. I don't even care if I'm picking the right, you know, critical success stuff right now. But now at least I got 10 going. And um, it'll take time for them to complete, but that will give me some skill points with those some of those passing. Um, progress. Yeah, I mean, the couple here are 30 minutes, but most of them are an hour or three hours, and two here are 20 hours. So um, it's going to be a while before we get the skill points from that. In the meantime, we're going to have to do something else. So, um, one thing I have not showed you guys, and maybe now is a good good enough as any time to do it, is uh, obviously you can go back and replay any of the missions. That's, that's the easiest way. Just go back and replay a mission we've already done, right? And you can replay any of them. Um, that's one way to do it. Another way is um, you can do those patrols I was talking about. Um, the problem with that is you just have to fly to the system and see if there is a patrol there. 
And, um, I mean, like, who knows? I don't know if there's a patrol here or not, but if we fly to the system and there, and there is one, it'll tell me, and then we can do it. In the past, it would tell you, you know, it would say, like, patrol, blah, blah, blah. Like, this says ear has system control, so there's one it's showing, but it doesn't show all of them. So, you know, yeah. Yeah, see, patrol. I can I can patrol this system here that I just passed. There's a patrol mission I could do here, but they're so random now because there's no order to it, and there was order to it before, and there's no order to it now. So um, I'll go ahead. There's another thing I did want to show. Also, there was um, the um, scan. Uh, do three systems in a uh, nebula thingy. If you go to, like, explore the Ophir Nebula, Kazan Cluster, um, uh, Kunasarum, Delta Volanis, those are the clusters that you see on the sector map, like here we are in Sivalorum, and you've got the Ophir Neb uh, Nebula right here. Um, so one of the things you could do is, to, to gain skill points, is we could go to um, explore the Ophir Nebula, and there would be three systems in there. That's more structured. Because it says explore three systems in the Ephir Nebula. So you go in, you, you, you do three systems, um, and you're getting skill points in those systems, plus skill points from doing all three systems together. So let's go ahead and do that so I can show you what one of those um, explorers is like. And that will get us enough skill points to be able to do our mission. So let's go to the Ephir Nebula. It's, that's more structured than patrols. I don't like it. I like the way the patrols used to be because it was more structured. It would say, just like the systems, it would say, um, explore the blah, 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 whatever. And then it would say, list the systems. It would list the, the Kaihali system or whatever. It would list another system and another system. And then you go to each system and you do it and it would check it off. And then when they're all done, you turn it in and you get a total skill point uh, reward for doing all of them together like that. And that was so much more structured and then you can keep track of what you've done and what you haven't done. Um, and it was just a lot more, it was just a lot better. I like that a lot better. So, um, you know, this kind of sucks the way they have the patrols set up now because you don't even know they're there. You know, nobody knows they're there unless you go to the system and see that one is there and it's, it's kind of stupid. Alright, let's go to the Affair Nebula. Nebulas are different than sector blocks because nebulas, well, they look like nebulas. And inside you have what's called anomalies. And an anomaly can be an actual anomaly, um, like you would scan to get, you know, particles or whatever to do crafting with. That's what the anomalies are for. Or it could be a random explore system. And what you want to look for is the explore systems, because we've got three explore systems we need to do here. So if one comes out to be a nebula, just fly to the next one until you see a button that says explore system. So when you get close enough, like this one here, see I've got a button that popped up that said explore unknown system. So this one is a system. This is one of the one one of the things or one I need to do to uh, as part of the systems as part of the three systems. Um, you can back out of these if you don't like it. You can exit, drop it, and go to another system if it's not working for you. So um, you're not stuck to doing this one just because we went into it now. If it ended up there was some kind of huge bug, which sometimes there are bugs where your officers will fall through the ground and then they're not with you anymore. So if there's a bug like that, you can exit out of it, drop the mission, and just go on to another anomaly and find another explore system and do it. Because that happens quite often. Um, this uh, there seems to be a lot of bugs with these systems, where um, s the enemy or your bridge officers will fall through the ground into emptiness, nothingness, and then you can't finish the mission. Okay, now these explore systems I have to explain. They're all different and they're random. You can do different things. Some of it is space battle. Some of it is ground battle. And then the other thing is what we've got right here called Aid the Planet. And an Aid the Planet mission is where we get close to the planet and they need some kind of commodity and you give it to them and they give you a reward, skill points, and um, you get diplomatic XP. So in our DOF system, if you look at the um, 
diplomatic XP. Right now we're at 3632. And after we finish Aid the Planet, that's going to go up. It's going to give us a little diplomatic XP for doing an Aid the Planet mission. And you can only find these inside these Explore systems. But they're in any nebula. But they're random. You don't know when they're going to come up. So one way to get diplomatic XP is to do Aid the Planet missions. But again, they're random, so you don't know when they're going to come up. So you basically just, um, you know, keep going into systems until you find one that you want. Um, a lot of people do that in the past. That was one way that I used to do it to spam XP points and get uh, that up there was to do uh, aid the planets and I would just go in. If it wasn't an aid the planet then I would drop it and go to the next system until I found one. So um, it says we are being hailed by a uh, random government. Um, they need astrometric probes. How much do you need? They need 10 astrometric probes. So yes, we're going to say deliver supplies. Come to a stop. Go to your replicator, which is under your inventory. And they needed 10 astrometric probes. And if under your replicator you will find that you have all the stuff that they need. You just have to replicate it, which costs money. So let's find uh, astrometric probes, and here they are. There's 600 energy credits each, and we need 10 of them. So we'll replicate 10 of them. And now it comes up and says, deliver supplies. And there you go, all done. That's all there is to aid the planet. We get 10 Diplo XP, we get bridge officer skill points, we got our regular officer skill points, and we're done. That's uh, one of the systems down. So that aid the planets go really fast. And they give you diplomatic XP. And they give you a reward, or at least they used to. Let's see if they still do. Uh, no, they don't. But they used to give you a reward where you would have some kind of uh, thing that you would then unlock in your inventory. And it would be some kind of random award uh, and you w that some kind of item or something would be useful to you. I guess they don't do that anymore. And that's quite a shame. Alright, so that's one of three, and now we just uh, keep going. We just go to go to these anomalies and go to one until we find another explore system. And we're just going to do that two more times, and then we can turn this in, and then we will be Commander 26. I think. I think it'll be enough skill points to get us there. And here we go. We got close to this one. A button came up. Explore unknown system, so let's go into it. And it looks like I may have to be doing this at the end of every um, mission we do so I can get enough skill points to get uh, to the next mission. That kind of sucks, but uh, I guess that's just the way it is now. Alright, so this is, um, a, a, like I said, they're all different. And uh, this one is an approach the base one. And on what that means is... You, there's a rock way out there and if you go to your map you can see the circle where the base is at you have to fly to anytime you see that where the base is really far away from where you are that's a ground mission so what's going to end up happening is we're going to fly to this base and then we're going to beam down to uh, to the base and have to do something on the ground so anytime your ship is that far away from the base it's always a ground mission so we just have to wait till our ship gets there. Now what I'm going to end up doing, because this is taking a long time, I'm just going to wrap this up as one video. And this will be our... Um, this will be a separate episode um, because I've had to do this, but at least I can now show you guys what I'm going to have to do in order to get us to each mission. And what I'll do from now on is I'll do this off screen after I play the mission so that the next video will be ready to uh, 
just start the uh, storyline mission and I won't have to do this in each video. Alright, let's beam down to the base. And on these ground base missions, they're always different too. You've got, you've got well, basically two types. One type is you've just got to run through the station and interact with uh, computer consoles. Um, the second one is you have to run through the base and destroy enemy groups and interact with computer consoles. And I guess there is a third one where sometimes it's just enemies and you attack just enemies and don't have to deal with computer consoles. But those are the three basic types of these ground missions. And they always look the same. The bases pretty much look the same. And you'll find that the maps are reused over and over and over and over again. Um, and uh, and there's, there is a story to these that you can read but it's not really necessary. Basically this one is I have to go through and access computers and find out what happened and basically just interact with a computer. And you have to find the computer. It's usually, it's usually not in the first area you beam down to. The first computer will usually not be in this area here. It will be in the second room you go to. Don't know why they do that, but uh, your beam in place is not where you'll find the first computer. So, um, now we have to find it. Here it is right here. Access computer. Captain, but the facility is working on some experimental wormhole technology, blah, blah, blah. So this one looks like there's not going to be enemies. It's just running through the uh, base scanning computers, which is the easiest of any of the ground missions obviously. You just have to run all the way to the end and you can look on your map that will just, we have to run through each room to the end and scan the computer console and it's that easy. And then we're done. So just look for the, the computer console, don't miss one or you'll end up having to go back to a room. And it does not look like there's even one in this room. So we'll go on to the next room. See, these, these maps are laid out so that they can be reused for enemy or uh, computer terminal maps. So like that room there, you could have had a whole group of enemies in there. If it was uh, one of those enemy... En one of those uh, enemy kind of maps. Alright, here's another console. Blah, blah, blah. Now we go on to the next room. Or, actually, there's another computer console right here. So, sometimes there will be two in a room. So, look for that. Now we gotta uh, access the final computer. So, we just keep going to the end. Access the final one, and then this one will be done. So, you see, these um, system ones can be very easy. And they don't take long at all. But sometimes they can be a little longer because if you have enemies to fight along the way that will take uh, longer obviously. This room did not have a computer so we'll go to the next room. This map is obviously set up for enemy contacts like um, you would have an enemy group in every other room where there is not a computer console or something like that. Okay and here is the uh, last computer console. And done. Beam up to the ship. And I noticed we did get uh, diplomatic XP for doing that as well. So those those little missions there are um, give you some XP. Now you see the scan anomalous reading. We are currently over one of these nebula anomalies, and it's an anomalous reading. And if we did that, that brings up the little mini game to do the uh, crafting stuff. Uh, which we're not going to do. Here's an, an, an anomaly and I got an explore system so we'll go into that. So what people do is to get crafting material they go to these nebulas and they go to the anomalies and they scan them and they collect all the particle traces or whatever they need to get from it and um, that's your material that you use to do crafting with. So that's these nebulas are useful for that. 
And they're also useful for these explore missions, which will get you some skill points, basically. Okay, this one is a defeat enemy squadron. So this is a space mission. And uh, there will be six enemy squadrons, and they'll all be in a straight line, basically. And we just have to defeat all six of the squadrons. And um, let's see what our enemy is going to be. It's going to be Riemann ships. So we're taking on Riemann ships here. And there's always one right where you start off. That is one of six. And basically you just keep going in a straight line toward the planet and take out um, five more of them. And when you get to the final one, it's always the capital ship or the big baddie, not capital, but the big baddie ship that you would find. For example, um, if this is Riemann, I'll be taking on um, maybe a Dederedix type ship. Something like that, I don't know. We'll see. That's another one down, now we go to the next group. And you can see the in the map, the narrow, narrow line. It's pretty much a straight line of enemies. Four of six.
Nice. And now the final enemy. And it is... Yep, it's one of the DDs. go. Look at that. That almost brought us right to uh, Commander 27. So um, when I turn this all in here, this will um, give us the skill points we needed. Return to sector space. Cool. Exit to sector. So now the now it seems the leveling is, is, is getting back to normal because um, you did have to do some of this when um, you know, the way it used to be, so that's not too bad now. Um, I like having to do that extra stuff, but again, uh, the patrols were laid out in a way that um, those were easier to do than these, and that was the preferred method to get to the next rank or whatever you needed to get to, or the next grade to uh, do the missions and stuff, so um, a little bit different now. Um, we just have to look for those manually. Okay, um, of course we can, you can keep doing explore systems until your mind goes numb. I mean, you know, they're infinite. They keep respawning and they're random, so, uh, but we don't need to do that. We need to turn this in. And... Congratulations, Commander. There we go. We are now a Commander, um, 26. So, what that means is... Decline. Exits. What that means is we are now able to do Project Nightingale because um, we're level 26. The problem now, however, is going to be once I finish this mission, that's not going to give us enough skill points to get to 27 at all to do by any means. So it's going to take us like somewhere over here, maybe you know. Um, so what what's going to end up happening is I'm going to have to do these explore missions or replay a mission. Um, in fact, that's, this is a good what what, what, we, what I can do, and this will be a good opportunity to do it, is uh, perhaps go and replay uh, one of those um, Jim Hadar missions, or a mission that gave some kind of weapon reward or ship uh, weapon or ship you know engine deflector whatever reward, so that I can um, replay the mission for the skill points, but at the same time get the appropriate mark level for commander now because it's mark six you know um, so we have the up-to-date stuff uh, of course with the Jim Hadar set you cannot use different marks and have the set bonuses so they all have to be the same mark level so I would have to do all three for example engine deflector and um, shield I'd have to get all mark six before I could use mark six because you can't mix mark um, four and mark six uh, you won't get the bonuses so um, yeah maybe maybe not I don't know I guess we really don't need to but uh, what I'll end up doing is I will after we do a mission if we do not have enough skill points to do the next one I will go ahead and do something a patrol or um, explore three systems or whatever off screen off camera to get a get us enough skill points to do the next mission in the next video. So I will be doing what you just saw here off camera in the future to get us the skill points we need so you don't have to watch that every single time. Otherwise it'll just end up being really, 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 really long and um, and, and repetitive and boring. So um, I won't do that. But now you guys have a grasp on what I was talking about where you will run out of uh, skill points and have to do something to get to the next mission, um, which kind of sucks, but 
it is the way it is and so that's just the way you have to do it and the ways you can do it there are several ways um, you can use DOF missions throughout your leveling which I suggest you just go ahead and do um, and those will give you skill points so that you probably will never even run into this issue if I have been doing my DOF missions like I was supposed to be doing from uh, when it started like and, and, and I know I've been very bad at it if I were if I were doing it every time I log in and go to a sector and start a new mission and I added new DOF missions, if I did that every single time, I would not be in this situation now. I would have enough skill points to do all the missions and it would be just dandy. So the DOF mission, um, definitely the easiest way to get those skill points. Um, the um, other way is explore the systems and you just go to your hail you go to in progress or uh, not in progress you go to available and then you look and see what you can do now and um, because we've been to a lot of different sectors in space there's a lot of clusters open to me now the Hermai, the Delta Volanis, the Acrunus um, you got all that stuff and if you look on your map you'll see where all those are like off of Sirius sector is the Delta Volanis off of Regulus is the Acrunus arm off of Sivalorum is the Afera Nebula. Off of Alpha Centauri is the Kazan Cluster. Um, and Pi Canis uh, is the Hermai Cluster. Those are the ones we've been to. Uh, and then when you get into the Cardassian area, you've got uh, the Rolar Nebula up here. You've got Petreka Nebula down here. Uh, you got the Zenus Expanse way over here. Oh, one, one up here. You've got the Aridan Belt way up here in Iota Provonis. Um, Ida Eridani does not have any, but um, um, Aurelius does not have any either, I don't believe. Gamma has the Batran Cluster. Um, Klingons have their own. They have several nebulas and expanses in Klingon area. Um, so that's where all that is, and when you get into a new sector and you do missions, it'll open that up for you to do three missions. Uh, and uh, get all those skill points. You've also got something called Strange New Worlds, which you will want to also add. Um, I should have done it anyway. I should have done it and I didn't. But it's basically accept a mission to explore three systems, so any of those cluster or nebula missions. You add this to that and you get dilithium on top of that. So you will get 1440 dilithium for doing three. And I just did three. I should have added this because then I would have got skill points plus 1440 dilithium. So this is one way to earn dilithium also, except this is a 24-hour daily. You can only do this one once a day. But if you're going to go ahead and do, you know, a cluster or nebula, add this, just accept, and add it to it, and it'll count as part of it, and you'll get both. You'll get credit for both at the same time. So you'll get dilithium and skill points. So that's very useful. Um, and I'll be doing that from now on. When I do the next one, I will add this to it. Uh, so that I can start getting dilithium when I do the three systems in a nebula. So then I'll get the benefits of everything and I'll have all that I can get from it. So that's one way of uh, getting more skill points. The other way again is patrols, but you have to fly to each system individually in the uh, sector block and see if there's a patrol there and if it says patrol you know the system then you can click patrol and go do it and you'll get skill points for it it's that simple so those are easy to get into too if you can find them and uh, so that, that's the easiest way to gain skill points and then of course you can replay older missions to your heart's content which is also an easy way to get skill points um, of course you get diminished skill points you don't get the same amount as you got the first time you do it you get a reduced amount um, and so because it's been over 30 minutes now, um, a couple of my DOF assignments are done. And you'll see, here, here we are in the bar, so let's see what we get up to just turning these two in. There, there. Not a whole lot, but that was just two of them. You know, and since you can add up to 20 at a time, you know, you can see how they can start adding up. Um, so, you know, that's something you want to keep an eye on. So that is, I will call this video the... Um, explore systems video I guess <laughs> um, because that's basically what we did and now you have an introduction to that and you see what's involved in that and now in the next video we'll get back to the main storyline and do Project Nightingale so I'll see you all then